I suspect that a great number of PC Botticerians create Botticera systems using integrated graphics. Perhaps a smaller percentage use discrete graphic cards. A discrete graphics card is perfect for high-end emulation or to crank up your emulators to 4K resolution or higher. In June of 2021, I created a quick tutorial on how to set up Botticera PC systems using NVIDIA graphics cards. For the majority of you, the tutorial helped with your NVIDIA graphics cards. Unfortunately, however, despite the tutorial, some NVIDIA graphic card users were still struggling to get the discrete graphic cards up and running. What made matters worse is I was not able to duplicate the problems that some were reporting. Needless to say, it was quite frustrating not being able to help out these NVIDIA users. Recently, however, I was attempting to set up a NVIDIA GTX 1650 mini computer when I ran into various problems. Fortunately, after some extensive experimentation, I was able to find a solution and now that GTX 1650 Baptist system is running extremely well, smooth as butter. Indeed, after testing it thoroughly for one month, I'm ready to share my solution. Are you ready? Let's do it. Greetings everyone and welcome to Bautista Nation. So delighted that you can join us today. So let's get down to it. First thing is first, let me go ahead and share with you my system here. Okay. Yeah, go into information. You can see here. I'm running this on the Intel i7-9750H chip. And you can also see here that my graphics card is the GTX 1650 NVIDIA. Alright? Now, let's go ahead and press F1. And the first thing we need to do is go into Applications. And let's go to Extern. Right there. Click on that. And from here, we got to type this command. Mount. The minus sign. O, not the zero. O. Remount space. Remount. Comma. RW, which stands for Read and Write space forward slash boot okay if everything works correctly if you did it right you'll see there you don't get a message at all let's say you type something wrong by accident for example all right it's going to tell you that command not found or i already do something like this Okay, you gave me also a message right there. So it has to be the correct format, okay? So again, mount, space, minus sign, O, space, remount, comma, RW, space, forward slash, boot. Once you enter the, the correct command, type exit. From there, go into share, go up to the root folder, go to boot. That's the boot partition right here. And there's the file that we need. Before I open up this file, bear in mind, if you're running this on an external portable drive, there's an easy way to do this. And I will show you how to do this before I wrap up this video. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And there's our boot file, okay? So on my original video, I said if you have a NVIDIA card, all you really gotta do is remove this comment section right here, okay? But it turns out when I did that, and it first booted up, all I saw was a blank screen. In fact, I thought it had failed altogether. It took some time, but eventually, however, it did boot up. But when it did boot up, I noticed that the video played really slow. Uh, everything seems to be running rather sluggish. So I knew that something was wrong. So the next step I did was I went ahead and put back the comment section here. And I went down here and I removed that. Sometimes that works. I tried that. It was still rather sluggish. So then at that point, I decided to go ahead and... Remove both comment sections. Try that. If all I fails, try that one. 
So when I did that, it turns out it worked perfectly. It was able to boot up, the video was playing really well, but I also ran into another problem. Before I share with you what the problem was, I also want to point out for those of you who have an AMD discrete graphics card, uh, go up here and then remove this one right here. Okay, play around with that if it, things don't work out the first time. All right. All right. After you make the changes, go ahead, select File, and save it. So again, before we proceed, the correct format is either the first one has to be without the comment, like that, or try this one, the bottom one, without the comment. And if that fails, then try both of them without the comments, okay? That's what worked for me in my situation. Make sure then you, from there you save it, all right? And then quit. After you do that, go ahead and reboot. All right, so Bata said it has rebooted. So after I rebooted that first time after I fixed it, uh, then I went to another problem. I was trying out the games, including the PS2, and everything was working fine until I decided to increase the resolution. So, for example, in this game right here, when I tried to increase the resolution right here, it played really well up to 3x. But if I increased it to 4x or anything greater than that, it would just freeze. It would just crash. And this was true for any emulator that I use. It just kept crashing if I tried to increase it to 4x, 5x, 6x, or 7x. And I couldn't figure out what was going on until I came up with a solution. Here's the solution. So I got out of all this, going to start, going to system settings, go down, all the way to developer. And from developer, vSync. Turns out by default it's turned on. And for some reason, uh, when it's on, it freezes up if you try to increase the resolutions of the emulators. When I turned it off, the first thing that happened was that it froze again. But I knew it was onto something. When I rebooted it again, everything worked fine. And since then, I haven't had a single problem with this system. So again, if you're having trouble with your discrete graphics card and it seems to be freezing on you, turn off VZIC, okay? And that should solve the problem. Hopefully, with this information, you'll be able now to enjoy your discrete graphics cards without any trouble and enjoy your about to set a system to its fullest potential. Before we wrap everything up, I want to point out if you are running your about to set a system on an external portable drive, the easier method to edit your about to set a boot file is just to go into your portable drive and double click on this file right here. And from there, Here's where you need to change it. You know, remove this one, or remove this one, or remove both of them, okay? Depending upon your needs, all right? Or if you use an AMD graphics card, then of course you have to either remove this one, or this one, okay? Depending what you're using. All right, that's it. Well, that's a wrap. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and like it. That would really help me out with YouTube's algorithms. If this is your first time watching a video from Batasera Nation, then I highly encourage you to check out our YouTube channel as well as our website, BatasaraNation.com. That will give you a great overview of what Batasera is all about and whether this will meet your emulating needs. Finally, I want you to know that I've got a lot more videos coming up, so therefore please consider subscribing so that you'll stay on top of the greatest and latest of Batasera. As a matter of fact, next time I will be discussing a new trick that I discovered that will allow you to increase the number of window games that were successfully run in the Steam version of Batocera. Trust me, if you're using Steam within Batocera, then you don't want to miss this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time on Batocera Nation. Bye.